we have with us Dr. Somil Kothari, who is a deputy director and head of refractive surgery department at the Bombay Eye Institute and Research Center. He is also a director of the fellowship program there, and he has a very uh, simple learning tip for all of us. Not simple, but an, a, a learning tip which the good surgeons can do it very well. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, can you see the screen? Yes. All right. So uh, I'll just uh, complement what Dr. Sharma was uh, talking about with the use of uh, the hooks and the rings. Sometimes we are faced with such a situation where we do have a small pupil on table because of some reason and somehow if the rings or hooks are not available or if you don't want to, want to use it, we should not forget what, uh, uh, what before the hooks and the rings came out, what our teachers used to teach us about the simple basic mechanics and uh, the phaco dynamics of uh, doing phaco emulsification in a small pupil without using any aid. So out here, you need to just uh, stain the, I usually stain the capsule because I know that it's uh, not, it's a challenging situation anyways. And uh, you try to uh, perform the capsular access with, uh, with direct visualization using a Kuglin's hook uh, and on the other hand and using a 26 gauge needle, or you can use your uh, forceps as well. Use a good quality uh, OVD to help uh, stabilize the chamber before you do this. So uh, this is a reason why we stain the capsule in a small pupil because we want a, a maximum visu visualization in uh, while performing the capsular access, which happens to be one of the most important steps uh, in such a situation. Once you have uh, done a good capsular access, in that case, uh, you just do a gentle hydro dissection. Here you see that it's quite, this pupil is quite small, but uh, in the words of Dr. Abhay Vasavda himself, it says that the small pupil helps us to remain disciplined and remain in the center of the eye without going too much in the periphery. So yes, definitely you need to just uh, sculpt the center, uh, central portion of the nucleus itself and uh, the small pupil enables <sighs> you to do so without any discomfort. You have to go deep. Remember that going deep is important out here rather than just enlarging your uh, your trench uh, lengthwise. And once you have adequate depth, you can have a good crack uh, at the nucleus. You divide it into two hemi-nuclei. Once rotation is uh, uh, achieved, then you go on further dividing the, the uh, nucleus into further quadrants. And mind you that the parameters should be low. It should not be high flow rate parameters or and high, uh, and high vacuum. It should be low flow rate parameters, it should be, uh, is, uh, you need to have patience in all these uh, situations, but definitely your patience will pay off. And again, I'm not talking about not, I'm not against the use of uh, using Malugan rings or hooks. It's just that I want to showcase that even without this uh, aids, we can still go ahead, you, having a good FACO emulsification just by using an, uh, our FACO, dy FACO dynamics playing around with our parameters, you can achieve a good surgery uh, even in such a small pupil. Remain in the center. You can see that uh, by your, my left hand, my probe, I'm a left-handed surgeon, uh, remains mainly in the center, while the right hand, my other hand, it uh, the Sinsky hook basically does the main work, right? And once you have that bimanual uh, IA does definitely help as compared to a coaxial IA. Because with the irrigation um, uh, probe, you can just uh, definitely just retract the iris out here and under direct visualization, go ahead and do a good cortical aspiration. Again, uh, uh, nothing against coaxial, but in my hands, but the bimanual eye definitely helps in, especially these situations. Once you have uh, done a good eye, you insert a good OVD, inject uh, 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 your lens inside. Here you can see a hydro implantation of the lens, which could, because I'm used to this uh, sort of a thing. And uh, once I have this lens in place, I just go ahead, dip it in, and check that it's in the bag itself and not uh, anywhere in the sulcus. And once that is there, uh, well, we just go ahead with the OVD removal, and that the case is complete. So I invite your uh, comments and suggestions. Thank you very much. Um, wonderful videos, both Dr. Vidushis and uh, uh, Somil, wonderful. Uh, Somil, I'll ask you this question and some of these questions are going to be uh, similar to both of you. Uh, don't you uh, would you tell us, using Kuglin's hook, 
sometimes that could itself irritate the iris and make the pupil more small. It's something I felt when I watched your uh, case. You're absolutely right, ma'am. So my first preference is, of course, without touching the iris, if I can make the entire excess, uh, even uh, partly uh, with uh, with the understanding that where my uh, focal point of the excess is, where my propagating point is, well and good. But in case, uh, especially for beginning surgeons, I would say that uh, you better do your excess under direct visualization, whether retraction, that's also fine. Both these techniques are fine. My preference is, of course, not to touch the iris. And uh, I wanted to ask you and Dr. Vidushi, uh, this finokin which is being used, um, do you think it has a role play with uh, uh, in IFS cases wherein would it be increasing the tone of the iris musculature? Your thoughts on that? Uh, yes, definitely, ma'am. Uh, I, I would uh, invite Dr. Sharma to comment first, please. Vidushi? You unmute yourself. I was just saying that Kudlen hook technique will probably uh, cause an even more floppy iris. So it should be, it can be used for other kinds of small pupils, but at least in a uh, floppy iris, it should not be used because it tends to make the iris even more floppy and with the prostaglandin release and all that. But it can be used for where you have had chronic uh, meiotic use or something like that. So other causes of small pupils. And I think the phenocane plus does help. But only thing is that you, uh, the rings are obviously better because they will protect the iris margin as well. And phenocane plus uh, will have uh, effect only for a very short duration. But uh, if you don't have anything, it is the easiest to use during surgery. The other question I'm sure all of us would want to know, uh, Somil or Vidushi could answer, what is your threshold for different pupil expan expansion devices? How would you, what would you tell the attendees here, which to use when? Yeah. So, uh, so it depends. Uh, hello, it depends. Uh, what the uh, is there any associated condition involved in it? If there is pseudo exfoliation, or if there is any surgical pre-surgery which has been done, in those cases, uh, I believe that one can use these pupil dilating aids early on because in pseudo exfoliation and in those patients who have had uh, who have been uh, who have had surgery done. And the other surgery, glaucoma surgery done. So in these patients, you know, we end up with a situation that we can have uh, more damaging to the iris. So in these situations, uh, even a four, 4.5 millimeter, four millimeter is sufficient for me to, uh, you know, use uh, uh, pupil dilating aids. One important thing in uh, deciding the pupil dilating aids at times is, you know, what the interior chamber depth is. If the interior chamber depth is less than maybe 1.5 or so, my preferred dilating aid in that case is an iris hook rather than uh, a, a malignant ring because malignant ring in these cases causes more uh, damage to the endothelium because of the maneuvering which is continuing. Another important thing is that uh, which was uh, previously being discussed, uh, the role of uh, you know adrenaline is very important in these uh, IFIS patients, but as and how the time passes, uh, you know there is atrophy of the muscle, and once the atrophy of the muscle is there, then the role of uh, adrenaline uh, decreases uh, in patients who are on alpha antagonist drugs. Anything extra you want to add, Sami? Uh, no, ma'am. I would just say that uh, for a for a beginning uh, surgeon, please use the technique which you are most comfortable with. Do use uh, an aid like a hook or a ring, uh, rather than just uh, going ahead with a small people without the aid. But uh, uh, my video was just to say that if you could IMX can work to your advantage. That's about it. Uh, and uh, one to you, Vidushi. This uh, uniplanar and biplanar uh, rings like Malubin and uh, BX, which would you choose when? Or the third panel could add to? Yeah, can I answer? Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. No, uh, uh, both the presentations were very good. Vidushi and Somil were very good. Only thing is, in small people, I want to give a clear take-home message. Be safe, then sorry. Okay, right in the beginning of the surgery, you decide what pupil expander you want to use and go ahead. And I will not take a chance, even after this experience of so many years, I will not take a chance of having a small pupil because all the complications are related to small pupil. The stress on me is so much and 
definitely the complication rate is more so right in the beginning of the surgery and if you if you know this people is going to come down on you either use iris hooks or meligan ring uh, or bx when to use what that is a question which chitra has asked chitra before that i wanted to ask you this arc webinar is for the left handed surgeons why <laughs> lot of left handed surgeons are there today <laughs> so i was wondering whether all the left hand surgeons you picked up so if it's a very small pupil pinpoint pupil my preferred choice will be an iris hook though suvan says you can do a pupil stretching and then go ahead and do a bx but my preferred choice will be an iris hook for that matter if a little dilating pupil about 3 uh, about 4 mm or something like that then meligan ring or bx ring or iris hook does a, i think uh, if you want to use meligan ring a bx ring because you can put just one incision and get away with it and that that's that's my choice so otherwise i use go in for iris hooks only thing is when you putting the iris hooks please make sure that your incisions are not very big not very small and it is also in the posterior limbal not in the corneal if you put it in the cornea the entire iris will come forward like a tent okay so put it in the posterior limbal so there is a equal traction and don't keep the iris hooks for too long a time don't have the traction for too long a time and uh, uh, make sure that once you remove the nucleus you don't require the pupil dilatation much so at that time you can remove or relax the iris hooks and loosen the iris hooks a little so that you can get away with the with the sphincter tear in these patients all right just That's also, right. also you need to differentiate between an elastic pupil and a rigid pupil yes it's an elastic pupil if you first inject bss before you do anything and if the pupil dilates and it's an elastic pupil a bx works really well if it's a rigid pupil then probably a malugan would work well the advantage of the uniplanar madam when you asked about that the bx being a uniplanar is advantages yes. especially if you have a pupil which comes down later after you have done a ccc then using a uniplanar bx will ensure that the ccc is not trapped if it's a malugan because it's a biplanar it could entrap the uh, or iris retractor could and trap the ccc also and in case of a shallow ac i have used bx it really works well yeah uh, just one comment i want to make based on uh, mohan's last uh, point that you know once the nucleus is out most of the surgery is over i think most of us believe that uh, dilatation is exercise necessary more for the nucleus emulsification like to emphasize that uh, uh, good visualization equally important for intraocular lens implantation also So yeah, understand. No, what, the, uh, what, the, what, the, what I what I meant, Ramurthy. What I meant was to just relax the iris hooks a little mm-hmm. at that time. I'm just saying that in case, especially if you're using a technique like sawmill without any uh, dilators, in those cases, I would not like to do a wound-assisted implantation. I would like to make a slightly larger incision, have my cartridge mouth almost at the vexus margin, so that the leading haptic and half the optic goes inside. Because if it opens up in the anterior chamber or in the sulcus it becomes extremely difficult to introduce the lens through a smaller pupil with a small uh, rexus and also again if you are using plate haptic lenses i stopped using them long back but recently i have started using some trifocals which come in a plate haptic design if you have a small pupil and a small rexus it's extremely difficult to introduce these lenses so it's important that uh, you ensure that right in the first go at least half the lenses inside the Uh, Rex is even if it means making a slightly larger incision and then you just tuck the lens inside. Of course, all of the points regarding nucleus management has already been made. And that can be removed at the end also. What difference it makes? Anyways, you can wait till the cortical lie and the lens implantation. So if I am using a device, I would use it only remove it only after remo- implanting the lens. Implanting the other. Remove it. We remove. Yeah. Just relax it. I said relax it. Relax it. it yeah. Or yeah. actually, uh, yeah. even in the beginning, we should not totally. Uh, from limbus to limbus Absolutely. it should be very you loose require that you don't, don't really that. require such a large pupil Absolutely. but i would not do i will tell you i am uh, telling the being this this webinar is an international webinar so many delegates are there i will not do a small pupil uh, without, without a, a pupil. iris yes Absolutely. i will not do yes i agree i will not do and i think that should be the message sent across that yes. we should yes. not uh, take the risks right and you want to introducing the next speaker anavan 